This is the RPG Crawler, and welcome to another season of Indie Game Friday, where each week I try to take a look at various independent computer role-playing games. For now, I'm going to start off with a free strategy role-playing game, Age of Fear, The Free World. Developed by Leslo Sliquo, I have no idea how to pronounce that, sorry, and published by Age of Fear, it was released on Steam on January 18th, 2019. Now, the Age of Fear series is three main entries long, plus some DLC at this point, and has been suggested to me quite a few times by different people, but until this point, I haven't actually taken a look at it. Age of Fear The Free World is intended to be an introduction to the basic game mechanics and a sort of teaser for the series at large, so it seemed the perfect one to grab to see if the main series was even worth taking a look at. I guess they met their goal with that one because... Here I am covering it. Age of Fear is a turn-based strategy RPG, or perhaps a strategy game with RPG elements, in which you command an army of various units that have their own upgrade, development, and equipment paths, and you move from encounter to encounter area, engaging in different battles involving other factions. As such, it actually vaguely reminds me of the old-school tabletop RPGs, just at the cusp of when they were beginning to diverge from war games in that regard. Age of Fear The Free World offers just three factions to try, a subset of the main series offerings. The Human Kingdom, the Greenskins Horde, and the Undead Legion. Once you select one, you may then select a difficulty level, and after a brief background screen, select a class. Each faction has a few hero classes, a warrior, a spellcaster, and some sort of special class that varies depending on the faction. Healers for humans, brutes for greenskins, and ghosts for undead. After the game starts, you are dropped into the main gameplay loop. The free world has no major storyline or campaign, but relies on minor quests and randomly generated battles, as well as locations where you can upgrade and purchase troops and gear. You start in one such location with your main hero, a number of additional troops, and some spending cash. You can purchase additional troops in the starting location, and if you select a unit, you can adjust its skills and its gear, provided you have enough experience or gold. Individual troops have a type, as well as some basic statistics. Each basic unit has hit points, morale, an attack and defense value for resolving combat, a speed value that determines how far they can move in a turn, an experience total that raises after encounters they take part in, and a number of kills. A unit may have special traits that vary depending on type, and each one may be equipped with a potion if you have one available. Heroes have the same basic stat as the basic units, except usually they have far more traits to fully define the class that they belong to. They may also be equipped with additional gear, a weapon, a shield, a protective item, jewelry, potions, and miscellaneous items. Of note is that skills for both heroes and base units may be adjusted if you get enough experience. Rather than dealing with discrete levels, you accumulate experience for each unit and it becomes a sort of currency. Once in a location, a unit will be marked with a book icon if it can be upgraded. Selecting the unit, then selecting skills, will give a menu of available upgrades. These can range from evolving units into different, more advanced types, granting them some sort of combat status, adjusting basic stats, and so forth. For instance, a skeleton could be advanced up to a skeleton warrior or a skeletal archer, or made into a regular or veteran troop, and then further reinforced from there. This upgrade path also includes augmented weapons and armor. For basic units, rather than buying individual weapons and armor with gold, you just upgrade them via experience. From here, you can exit to a map screen, which offers a number of locations with thumbnails posted around the map. Some are battles of various sorts, some are quest givers, and some are locations. Quest givers in the free world generally request an item that you can get during a battle. Locations were covered earlier and just allow you to buy troops or gear, which may vary from location to location. And finally, there are battles, the meat and bones of the game itself. Each battle is of a different type, which may modify the map and the troop layout that it presents. Some battles are even between multiple types of enemies and may involve a general free-for-all between all the different factions involved. Battles themselves are turn-based, with each side getting a turn in which they may move or attack with all of their units. The first turn of the battle is the deployment turn. Although you may have quite a few units 
under your command, each battle has a limit on how many you can actually deploy, and it's during this deployment turn that you can switch in and out which units you want to use, and then position them within the starting area of the map. From that point forward, each side gets its turn. Each unit may be selected, and then either move or use a special attack. Movement is defined by a highlighted radius, and obstacles may limit access to certain places. Facing changes also seem to be a thing as far as movement goes, so even if you could normally go around an obstacle, which may include allied units, the position you can move to may still be limited due to not being able to abruptly hook around and move into an area. If you move and end up adjacent to an object or an enemy, you may attempt to attack them in melee. If the unit in question is a ranged or a spellcaster unit, however, it seems to usually require the entire turn to execute a spell or ranged attack, which can preclude movement. Spells take mana, limiting the number of spells a spellcaster may cast, although I rarely encountered such a limit during battle. Some special abilities of certain units, especially hero units, may be on a cooldown timer as well, requiring a number of turns to recover before being usable again. An attack has a certain percentage to hit, as indicated during the attack targeting, and if it hits, it will knock off one hit worth of hit points from the enemy. Once all hit points are exhausted, the enemy is defeated. Certain abilities, such as animating dead, can be used on fallen enemies, so it can be important to know where their positions are. Battle maps seem to be fairly random, although I don't know if they're exactly completely random, and may include containers that can be smashed or chests that can be looted. This may be done during combat, but if you complete combat, you are given the option to stay on the battlefield afterwards, so you can always run around and loot containers after the fight. This is useful as chests can contain not only gold, but magic items, potions, and other gear with which you can equip your hero. After each battle, the units that took part in it are awarded experience, and you get a certain amount of gold with which to buy supplies and additional troops. As far as the free world goes, you simply repeat this until whenever you feel like it, although I understand that the core game series has campaign quests to follow. In terms of graphics, the free world looks like something out of yesteryear. The unit portraits and the maps themselves are decent, but the top-down representation of troops can take a little bit of getting used to for people who usually aren't into that sort of thing. It has a retro aesthetic as well without being pixelated. The music and sound effects are passable with a nice, classical-sounding background music track that doesn't seem to intrude too much, at least in my opinion. The major complaint I have with the overall presentation has more to do with the user interface. It feels quite clunky when it's necessary to grab new troops, or upgrade them, or equip them, but at the same time, that doesn't necessarily detract too much, since you don't spend too much time on unit management. In terms of actual gameplay, the combat is simple enough to maneuver around and get used to, and if you like turn-based combat, it certainly does that well. Again, I had some minor issues in terms of selecting and moving units, telling them where to go exactly. Nothing too severe, just a little bit of clunkiness around the edges that seems to be part and parcel of how things are represented, rather than any true failing in design. Some of the random combats seem way, way easier than others, although I couldn't exactly say that I encountered any overwhelmingly difficult matches during my admittedly brief time playing it. That having been said, do understand that at least in the free world, the RNG seems to play more of a prominent role than it might in the main game series, which, as I've stated before, has its own quests. Still, if you've been thinking about looking into the Age of Fear series, I honestly think that Age of Fear the Free World is worth taking a look at. I admit I haven't played the main games in the series yet, but after playing the Free World, I'm definitely thinking of taking a look at them. If I do, I'll cover them here, of course, but it's not going to be one of those stretches where I cover them all in a row. That being said, they set out to boil down the main gameplay into a sampler game. I think they succeeded on that account. After playing the free world, you'll have a better grasp on whether the rest of the series might appeal to you or might not. It's definitely not for everybody. But since this one's free, what do you have to lose but time? And on that note, I'm going to wrap this review up here. This has been the RPG Crawler with Indie Game Friday Age of Fear, the free world. As always, I'll include a link where you can pick up the game on Steam below. If you like what you've seen, remember to leave a like, comment if you've got any feedback, and subscribe for more RPG content, both tabletop and computer. And here's to looking forward to many more indie RPGs in the year to come. Until next time, take care and goodbye.